You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Great music ahead of us this week at Concordia University, Wisconsin. We're going to share that with you in just a moment. Hey, we want to say thanks to our friends at Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour too. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us this morning, Dr. Louis Menchaca, Professor of Music, Department Chair for Music at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Dr. Menchaca, thanks so much for joining us on The Coffee Hour today. Uh, It's my pleasure. Thank you. And right alongside you, Johanna Anderson, Associate Director of Instrumental Music at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Johanna, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, we are excited to talk about a longstanding tradition at Concordia University, Wisconsin, and that is Christmas at Concordia University. I want to to share about this event with our listeners. But before we even get to that, let's talk about the, the place of music at Concordia University, Wisconsin. How has music been a part of Concordia University, Wisconsin? Well, you know, I can only speak for the last 30 years, which is is my 30th (laughs) year, which is great. But since 1881, you know, music's been a big part of the uh, the experience here at at Concordia. The music department serves the artistic, cultural, student life, academic parts of the university. And we feel it has a very, very high priority on the on the stakes of the university in meeting its um, all its goals. I don't know, Ms. Anderson, do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us about the different music opportunities, music ensembles that students can participate in at CUW. Sure. All the residential students on campus, about a third, between a third and a quarter, participate in some sort of music activity, be it academic study, private lessons on their instruments or ensembles. And we feature 12 ensembles of all the uh, music students. I say this year, our numbers are about 250 to 260 students. And we usually from that, most of them were non-majors, and I think our membership is distributed around, encompasses 47 majors of the of the 70 that we offer. So we got a pretty far reach, mm-hmm. and is- uh, we have six instrumental ensembles. We have four choirs, two handbell choirs, so a lot of activity to reach for and, and use. What does that mean? You mentioned a a lot of them aren't music majors. What does that mean to be able to have people who who love music but aren't necessarily majoring in music to be able to participate in all of these different ensembles? You know, you asked a great question because I think that's the great reach and the great service of a liberal arts university is that people who want to continue their musical activity at at a high level but don't necessarily want to give up their dream on being a pharmacist or being a uh, physical therapist or being an English professor, they can still participate in music at schools like Concordia University of Wisconsin at a very high level with professors they really respect and want to. And so I could just see how music, I know for me, is just a, a valuable part of my life. Uh, and, and certainly I, I get to use music in my work every day at KFUO, exactly. but so many, as you pointed out, so many different careers and vocations in which music is part of their life, but it's not necessarily directly related to what they do as, as a pharmacist. I don't know, unless you're maybe a singing pharmacist, <laughs> but uh, it happens or singing, it, nurses, <laughs> or singing nurses. How does that, how does music enhance the the life of a student? And, and really, I guess, complete an education, add to, you, you were talking about the arts, I guess, unpack that a little bit more for us, the, the value of, of arts for students who aren't necessarily music majors. Yeah, Andy, you bring up a great topic, which uh, could really has led to many workshops that we've given in the sense that more and more is known about brain development, the, the neuroscience uh, of brain development, and more and more data and research opportunities have proven and have shown statistically that music activity enhances brain function in different me- in different ways. To put it calmly and a little bl- more bluntly and, and shortly, the fact that music helps us focus and um, engage in intellectual activity a little bit better is just one reason why so many people unconsciously, including myself for so many years, realized why all these people 
from different majors really want to keep on with their music appreciation, music performance, because it does it does help our function in many which ways. And for many years, we didn't know why, but the last 30, 35 years, there's data that proves that. Mm -hmm. I know being able to participate uh, myself as a non-major in uh, music when I was at Concordia was definitely a huge selling point for me to be able to to do that and, and to be able to major in other things. What is the last couple of, I guess it is a couple of years, what has what the music uh, program been like for the last couple of years? What are some of the, the challenges that you've been facing with, with rehearsing and performing and all of these things? Well, I'd say the last few years, uh, specifically the last 18 to 19 months as the pandemic hit, we were thankful that we had an administration that was going to go ahead and try to support the university's the university's take on trying to come back in person. So having said that, we were very, very cautious and took administrative um, support to help us ensure uh, that we did um, testing. And uh, because our kids wanted to play and different protocols. And the last two years, we had to have, well, at least the last year, we had to have no audiences. But last year, we did put pre recorded performances out. Everybody distanced. And the students took it home, hook, line, and sinker. They really wanted to come back to campus. They wanted to perform. We rehearsed outside. We did everything we could possibly do to make sure that we were going to put out a, a fine musical product. And I think the biggest revelation was that is how badly they wanted to do it. And we we're able to keep everyone safe. And uh, we put out three outstanding performances last year that were pre-recorded. And now this year, we're still, we're still doing some protocols. And uh, now we're back on campus where we're limiting audiences. And again, we have no trouble with everybody participating. So share with us about the tradition of Christmas at Concordia University. Well, I'd say for the longest time, this is the 33rd Christmas at Concordia at the Mequon campus. Wow. And I think that people would always see the Christmas season not start until after Christmas at Concordia starts. That's kind of a iconic event on campus. And, um, we used to, before the pandemic, we used to sell out about almost 900 seats per night for two performances. And we had to, uh, we're talking about limiting the uh, number of seats even before the pandemic and possibly putting out their performance. And then the pandemic hit. So we had to put that on hold. But it is a, um, a great campus event that uh, administration, advancement, admissions, everybody takes hold of this and so this year, even though we're sold out for a limited audience, you can watch it online. Should I give you the address right now? Sure. So it's www.cuw.edu forward slash Christmas concert. So if you weren't able to get your ticket to see us live this year, you can see this online. That is a great opportunity for people, whether or not you're you're in Wisconsin, but I know uh, for our listeners across the the U.S. and the and around the world, uh, to be able to watch that live, that'll be a really wonderful experience. So tell us about the the ensembles that'll be participating, some of the music that we can expect to hear during this Christmas concert. Yeah, so this year, as in previous years, all of our music ensembles, with the exception of Pep Band, Pep Band doesn't <laughs> perform for this, but all of the, the choral groups, so there's four different choirs. And then what's really neat is that there are also a couple of combined choral pieces and so you have over 100 choir students singing together, which is really special. And in addition, on the first half, we have our two handbell groups. And then after intermission is the instrumental portion. So jazz ensemble, two of our concert bands, the symphonic wind ensemble and university band, as well as our chamber orchestra. Now, if the pep band did have a Christmas concert, I mean... <laughs> I would go. It, it would be fun. <laughs> I know. Maybe maybe one of these years we'll have to put something together. That would be so fun. <laughs> we also want to include drumline on there. Yeah. Yes. Would, drumline I mean, Christmas would be amazing. You could totally do that. <laughs> Andy, uh, we know it would. And that's one of the reasons we haven't put it on there because it would uh, <laughs> without, it, it would steal the show from the from the other groups. 
<laughs> that would be amazing. Well, <laughs> and and the lineup that you have sounds fantastic. Uh, it, it sounds like uh, it's just going to be uh, a great way to carry on that tradition at Concordia. So we, I know that the house is already full, but we can join virtually, join the live concert virtually. What are the dates and times again? And that would be December, Friday, December 3rd at 7.30 and Saturday, December 4th at 7.30. All right. And these are all central time. So you can join us, uh, join virtually, and we'll share the link in the, the notes as well today. So folks can uh, get that link and, and go right to the, the live event. Anything else we need to know so that we can enjoy Christmas at Concordia this year? I think, Andy, the one thing that I didn't want to stress is that um, of the people that are on our um, on our personnel roster, you have approximately 50 music majors and minors, and it's a great experience for them to work with non-music majors and minors because that's what they're going to have to do in their career. Mm -hmm. And it's just a perfect laboratory for them. It really, really is. And we're very proud of that. Very good. Very good. Christmas at Concordia coming up this weekend. Find more at cuw.edu. Dr. Menchaka, Professor of Music and the Music Department Chair at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee. You're very, very welcome, Andy and Sarah. Thank you for your support and thank you for uh, getting the word out for us. Johanna Anderson, Associate Director of Instrumental Music at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Thanks so much for joining us on The Coffee Hour. Yes, thank you so much. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs>